Hey there everyone, this is Jason. We're here at J&J Reptiles in Calgary and today we're going to talk about bearded dragons. Hey everyone, this is Jason once again here with uh, Reptile Parties based in Calgary, Alberta and formerly with Animal Planet Scale. And uh, today we're at one of my favorite stores, J&J Reptiles, and we're actually talking about bearded dragons. J&J uh, Reptiles actually started based on bearded dragons. They were called the Dragon's Tail and were a pretty established bearded dragon breeder here in Canada. Uh, they've sent their dragons worldwide, really quality stuff and uh, eventually that turned into opening up a pet store. So they've been around for 15 years, which is really amazing for, for a specialty pet store especially. And uh, they are one of my go-tos along with Got Reptiles. We're so lucky to have two great, amazing uh, stores here in Calgary. And uh, so I said, can I come and talk about some of your animals? And they said, absolutely, which is always awesome. So this is uh, TJ. And TJ is a bearded dragon. Uh, he is a hypo leatherback, and uh, he's named that after his dad. So his dad is TJ. TJ's dad is Jim. That's where the J and J reptiles came from. And TJ is actually running the joint. So it's a family-run business. Uh, bearded dragons are usually found in Australia, and they get their name because if they get scared, they puff out their chin and turn it black, so it looks like they have a beard. Uh, they come in a lot of colors. Uh, leatherback is pretty common. Uh, leatherback means that they have reduced scales, so they're not as rough as a regular bearded dragon, but uh, there's some absolutely stunning bearded dragon colors. Their normal color is beautiful, but a lot of them have a lot of strong oranges, reds, there's even zeros, which are white with black eyes. Uh, unfortunately, bearded dragons, uh, because they're so popular, they are also <laughs> one of the most unwanted reptile pets. Uh, almost every day I see ads for people who are looking to rehome their bearded dragons, which is which is really sad. The important thing to remember is they are a commitment. Uh, bearded dragons have a big appetite, especially when they're babies. Uh, they are an omnivore, so they eat salad and they eat bugs. They need to uh, have a lot of space, about a three to four foot minimum terrarium. Uh, I prefer PVC from a company like Cornell's World or either of the stores here in Calgary can also order those in for you. Uh, UVB, heat, so it is work. Once they're set up, it's fairly easy to maintain them. It's just that initial startup cost is high and just making sure you're feeding them and caring for them. The thing about them is they are very personal. They're often very friendly animals. You can sit and watch TV with them or hang out with them. And people like to put human emotions on animals, which is something called anthropomorphism. So that's one of the number one things I see with people who are looking to get rid of their pets, especially reptiles, is they'll say, I'm not giving it the love and attention that it deserves. Thing is, is they don't need to be taken out. They don't need to be handled all the time. They are perfectly content as long as they have a proper heat gradient and are being fed. So compared to a lot of other pets, very low maintenance animals, but they do poop and it can be stinky. So this is an adult male, so you can get a good idea of what the size can be. So what is inside a bearded dragon is a question a lot of people ask, a lot of people don't actually realize that reptiles do have bones, especially snakes. People are like, snakes don't have bones. They absolutely do. So this is actually a bearded dragon skeleton. This was an adult that uh, sadly passed away, as unfortunately all of our pets eventually do. And uh, this awesome guy named Dave here in Calgary is Good Luck Skulls on Instagram. Uh, you can find his info below. Uh, he actually mounted this bearded dragon for the shop. So you can see the rib cage, the tailbone, and then that skull with their little sharp teeth. So yes, bearded dragons do have teeth, and yes, they can hurt. Now they tend not to bite, but a lot of times they'll go through kind of like a teenage phase where they hate you and they wish they'd never been hatched and they just want to hang out in their cave and I don't know, listen to emo music. So very much like a teenage human, but eventually they do come out of it. So I'll see that too, where people are like, my bearded dragon was so friendly and now it's not. It's a teenager. So, you know, you don't get to see a skeleton very often. So you can take a look there, just see, you know, that they have those huge eye openings, but a very small space inside the skull for their, uh, for their brains. 
and then the whole rib cage, the spine, the long spindly legs, and it comes down into a tail. So pretty cool to see a bearded dragon uh, skeleton. So I mentioned zero bearded dragons, and this is what I'm talking about. Uh, just such a beautiful lizard, right? You know, I'm talking about you, don't you? Uh, this one doesn't have the really dark eyes like some zeros do, but, you know, very, I love beardy eyes too. Like, they're just amazing. Like, there, there's something there. I mean, they're not the brightest animals, but there's definitely something about their eyes and their expression and even just the way they move. Like, he's definitely checking me out and trying to figure out what's going on. But, I mean, pretty much a pure white, dark white bearded dragon. Uh, absolutely beautiful animals. So there's a lot of uh, different morphs, like I said, oranges, reds. Uh, there are also scaleless beardies. Um, now that's a whole other whole other ball of worms because you don't have scales and, and uh, not really going to get into that uh, this time, but I do have a scaleless dragon at home, so maybe I'll introduce you to him at one of our future videos. But, you know, you've got your leatherbacks, which are reduced, you've got your normals, and even a normal bearded dragon is just an absolutely once you start getting into some of these morphs, like, this, like the, uh, the zeros, that's just breathtakingly beautiful. So this gives you an idea of what you're typically going to see, especially in a pet store or a reptile expo, is babies. This is a four-month-old normal baby bearded dragon, and so it has a lot of growing to do, even at four months, and they start off even smaller than this. The thing about getting a baby beard or dragon, just like having a baby anything, a puppy, a human, a kitten, they're going to be a lot more work as you're raising them than they are going to be as an adult. A baby beard or dragon can easily go through hundreds of small crickets per week, as well as your variety of leafy greens like kale, escarole, dandelion greens, Swiss chard, mustard greens. They do need a lot of variety, and especially if you have one baby, if you don't eat that yourself, you're going to be going through a lot of waste. You know, chopping up some collard greens and then you get a spoil before they can go through all of them. So that's one of those things you sort of need to keep in mind. Uh, but if you do like to eat salad, you can have some salad for yourself and have some you no know, dressing for your baby. So they are a lot of work. You're setting up a timer so that it lights up like an hour before you wake up so you can feed them before you head out for the day. You get home and you feed them again and then about an hour before bedtime you got to feed them a third time. That's a lot. Whereas with an adult, uh, every other day have a have veggies there regularly for them and feed them protein as an adult even uh the bugs like superworms hormone caterpillars uh roaches if they're legal in your area they're not here which is why i'm talking so much about feeding them crickets for people are like you should be feeding them roaches we're not allowed to in canada they're illegal here otherwise i would absolutely be feeding them cockroaches um so it's a lot more work to have that baby and you got to keep that in mind so even though you might see a cute little baby like this at the store, really think about what you're going to be getting into to raise that baby. Like I said, it's similar to a puppy. You don't just get a puppy and be like, okay, you have to train it, you have to feed it more often, you have to walk it more often, teach it not to pee in the house. Okay, it's not quite like a puppy, but you are putting in a lot more work than you are with an adult. So check out this cute little guy or girl. Just baby beauties are some of the cutest things you can possibly ever. So this is the epitome of tiny, tiny beardies, but so much personality. You can see he's checking me out. He's very calm. They're, they're used to it. In the wild, you would not be able to pick up a baby bearded dragon or probably even an adult bearded dragon like this. But because they see people every day, they do tame down quickly. You might see them, see them beard as a baby, but not very often. And often more so if there's other beardies in the enclosure with them. It's pretty common for people to raise uh, baby beardies in groups. It is important that you feed them a lot. Uh, if you do do that, uh, you are taking a risk because there's a possibility they might bite each other. Of course, people know Kevin, our bearded dragon, who is missing her back foot because one of her siblings ate it. It can happen. So if you're getting your own beardies, definitely an animal you want to keep separate. You can have multiple beardies, you're just going to be setting up multiple enclosures, except for if you're putting them together for breeding. That would be my recommendation, because uh, you're not having to worry about fights, you're not having to worry about them fighting and attacking each other. Uh, it's a pretty unpleasant experience uh, for the female, especially. The males will bite them, they'll, they'll do a lot of damage, so you do want to be very careful with that. 
but this is what they start off as. And baby bearded dragons are probably one of the cutest things you can possibly see in terms of baby reptiles. Like, so cute. Uh, now, this dragon actually came here because one of the customers went, uh, our babies laid eggs, do, or our dragons laid eggs, do you want them? And they said, sure, and they hatched them out. And that happens so often for people keeping together. Is they're like, what do I do? I see that all the time on social media. My beard is laid eggs, what do I do? The honest answer frequently would be to freeze them and dispose of them. Now, people don't like that answer. And I understand that because it's an egg, it's a life. But the thing is, is baby bearded dragons are a huge amount of work. And they have a lot of babies. Because in the wild, a lot of them are not going to survive. I bred bearded dragons once. One time and one time only. Mom laid 27 eggs, 23 hatch, and 20 of them survived. She laid two more times, but both of those set of eggs were what are called uh, slugs. They weren't fertile. And I was really disappointed. But once I realized how much work was going into feeding those baby bearded dragons and trying to find homes for them, because there can be so many out there. You can be sitting on your baby bearded dragons for months after that 10 to 12 week period where you shouldn't be selling them anyways because you want to get them raised up to a certain size. So even though I'm glad I had the opportunity, I'm glad I bred the bearded dragons once, it's not something I personally am going to do again. I'm going to leave that to the professionals to let them continue to breed uh, the babies and sell them in a proper manner in, at a reptile expo or from a store uh, where they can be properly educated and they have the time and it's their business to actually breed and sell animals, not just a hobby. So we've seen a few different sizes of these beardies. Uh, this is about six months old. So it does take over a year for them to reach full size. So at this size, he's still eating a lot. Uh, you know, at this size, they're a lot less fragile. You can handle them a lot more. They're more content to hang out. They can, you know, sit on your shoulder. People like them to hang out and be friends. But still a big appetite, uh, still eating a lot. That first year, as I said, is the, the longest period, but we've seen a couple of different sizes of these beardies, and I hope you've enjoyed sort of learning about them. Tremendous amount of work, guys. The important thing we always want to remember if we're getting any kind of pet is to do that homework, make sure it's the right fit. For a lot of people, a bearded dragon is not the right choice. Maybe something like a crested gecko or a leopard gecko might be a better choice. Uh, for some people, this might be too uh, much of a starter pet, and you know maybe they have some experience or they're an adult and they're looking for something a bit more challenging and they're gonna be looking for uh, something maybe a bit bigger or if it, you know, with different needs, larger enclosures, things like that. So, you know, there is no answer to what's a perfect pet reptile, even though I think beardies are definitely on that list because what's the right choice for me might not be the right choice for you. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this video on bearded dragons. All the info about J&J &J reptiles is down below as well as all of our info, our social media, Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell to make sure you're notified when we get new videos. We're posting videos every week. We had a great uh, time posting videos from Africa. Our next few videos are going to be more like this, educating you about some of the reptiles. But definitely when we have the opportunity to go on more adventures, we're going to be heading back out into the world and seeing what we can find. So don't forget to subscribe. Check out our Patreon. All the infos are below. We'll see you next time.